Okay, and welcome back. So here we've got another kinematics problem, and this one involves a battle. And it says that a mortar crew on a hill fires a shell at the enemy. I guess we would be the uh, people firing the shell at the enemy, and the enemy's coming up the hill, right? So I guess we're right over here. So that means our point of origin is going to be at the top of the hill. And the firing angle of the shell is 50 degrees. So that means that this firing here, this firing angle, we'll call it theta is going to be 50 degrees. All right. And the hill subtends an angle of 40 degrees. Well, that would be this angle here, which we'll call phi, right? So phi is equal to 40 degrees. All right. Well, from geometry, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So this would be a parallel line. This is a parallel line right here, these two. Here's the transversal. And so therefore, that means that this is also phi, right? All right. And we know that the velocity of the shell is 39 meters per second. So this would be V sub naught. So V sub naught is equal to 39 meters per second. So what do we need to find? Let's see, the distance along the side of the hill where the shell hits. All right, so that means we have to find this distance here, right? This D. And the time it takes for the shell to hit the ground after being fired. So we need to figure out how long the shell stays in the air, I guess. So we'll have to find T. So we need that. So we need D. And we need to find T. And the final velocity, ah, uh, yes. Okay, so that's V final. So these are the things we need to find right here. Well, considering this problem has quite a few steps to it, I'm gonna have to make some space here. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of the paragraph, just kind of move this stuff up a little bit. One second. Okay, so how do we start a problem like this? Well, let me see, we've got V sub naught, we've got theta, so we can use our kinematic equation uh, for position, right? So that means we can use our displacement vector. The problem is we don't know what the time is. However, this point right here, this is the point that this vector points to, right? This, this vector here. If this was a vector, it would be pointing to this point here. And so therefore, if we knew what the time and we know what the velocity is, we know what the angle is, we just don't know what the time is, but we could use this, this right here, this vector. This one would be in terms of t and theta, this would be uh, t v sub naught cosine theta i hat plus t v sub naught sine theta minus one half g t squared j hat. So if we knew what the time was, uh, that would tell us, well, that would tell us two things actually. One, we'd know this height right here. So this would be, well, since this is my point of reference, this would just be a y final, right? That would give me up to this point down here, right? And then along the same path, this would give me my x final here, right? So I guess I could make that a little neater. This would be my x final right over here, right? This would be x final. So x final is from here to here, and y final is from here to here, right? And yes, this is a 90 degree angle. All right, so what we want to do is try to relate somehow this, this uh, phi with this equation over here, right? Well, let's see, what do we know so far? Well, we know that this right here is x sub final. We know that this part right here is y sub final. Well, I could say that d sine of phi, right? d sine of phi gives me y sub f. Now this y sub f will be negative, right? So I would have I would have something that looks like this. I would say that d sine of phi is equal to a negative y sub f. And I would have the d cosine of phi equaling to x sub f, right? So this would be d cosine of phi is equal to x sub f, right? Uh, well, just to work with positives over here, let me just move this negative sign to this side over here, right? And just erase that there. There we go. Uh, now, the reason why I even thought about using negative here is because, well, this, this distance here is going to end up being a negative amount down here, right? So that means if, if I was trying to solve for d, d would be a positive number, right? 
basically, I'm just looking at, I'm just thinking ahead just to make sure that my results come out to be the correct sign that I want. So what can we do here? Well, I can let d sine phi equal, well, this negative d sine phi equal y sub f, which is equal to this here, right? So I could start doing this. I can say, well, negative d sine phi is equal to, well, I've got t v sub naught sine theta minus one half g t squared. Okay. And the problem is now I've got this equation over here and this one here, but notice this, check this out. What if you were to just turn these into fractions, right? So that way you have this over here is divide by cosine phi and the same thing over here, right? I could just take this over here, this TV sub naught cosine theta. And I could just divide by that, right? TV sub naught cosine theta. What did I just do? Essentially, I just did this y sub f. This is actually this is just y sub f over x sub f. You see how that works, right? Because y sub f is this and this, right? I know you guys see that. It's just maybe some of you might go, wait, 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 what just happened? All I did was on both sides of this equation, I took this right here, which is that, and at the same time, it is this, okay? All I'm doing is I'm equating them both, okay? You see how that works, right? All right, good. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this really quick. Okay, there we go. So let's see now. Well, the left side... You can see the D is going to cancel with the D, right? That's great. And this is just a trig identity, right? So this, this becomes, I guess I could write this all this way. This would be negative tangent phi is equal to, uh, I could write this as two fractions, right? So let's see how this is going to work out. Well, this will be T V sub naught sine theta over t v sub naught cosine theta minus another fraction. Let's uh, let's do this. This is going to be one half g t squared over t v sub naught cosine theta. So the the two would go on the bottom. So I'd have two v sub naught two t v sub naught cosine theta on the bottom, and on the top I would just have g t squared. Right? That's sloppy. There we go. All right. So this t cancels with this t, v sub naught cancels with the v sub naught, and this again is another trig identity, and this t cancels with one of these, which leaves me just one. So I'll rewrite this as negative tangent phi is equal to tangent theta minus, I've got a g, a t, that's over 2 v sub naught cosine theta. Well, what do we have so far? Oh, look at this. I can use, I can find out what T is now, right? It wasn't the first thing they asked us to find, but I can find that, right? Because I have everything else, right? I've got the uh, phi, the theta, and I've got the V, right? So I can just do a little algebra here. And essentially I can move, uh, let's see, the this, this fraction, the GT over 2V, I can move that over to the other side and move the negative tan phi over to the right. So that way I end up with gt over 2v sub naught cosine theta, and that's equal to tangent theta plus tangent phi, right? And then, again, some basic algebra again. Isolate the t, and I guess I will probably need more space for this. Let me go to the next page. I'll, I'll rewrite this equation again right here on the next page, right? We're going to have to refer back to this page to finish the problem, obviously, but let me just copy this last equation right here on the next page. All right, and from here, t is equal to, let's see, 2 v sub naught cosine theta times tangent theta plus tangent phi. And that's all over g. Okay, we can call this equation one. This one will give you the time for the problem. All right, let's see now. Well, since you guys have a piece of paper that has all the information in front of you at once and you're trying to see things on multiple screens, 
I'm going to reorganize and reintroduce this equation into what we have so far. So let me see. Let me uh, give me one second. There we go. Uh, you know, if you plug in, if you plug in these givens here, you're going to get uh, you're going to get about 10.3899 seconds, right? So it's about 10.4. Uh, I'm going to solve this problem in terms of the givens, right? So that way you're given this. So I'm just going to write. So I'm just going to solve for every unknown. So we need to find the T, the D, and the V sub F. So far, we've got this taken care of. We have the T taken care of. Now we just need the distance and the V sub F. All right. So let's take a look at this for a second. Notice that this X sub F right here and this Y sub F, well, since you know the time, you could just plug the time directly into these equations, right? This will give you the X. This will give you the Y. And so therefore, you could use a Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared is d squared. Take the square root. So d is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And, and that would give you the answer. But let's try something out here. Let's see. If we take this t, notice this right here, t v cosine theta, right? This would give me the x sub f, right? So that means that it would give me this distance right here, right? Well, if I look at this angle over here, phi, right, I could say that, well, D, actually I erased it, but remember this right here? If I said, I could say that D uh, cosine of phi is equal to X sub F, right? And this right here, TV cosine theta is equal to x sub f, right? But I've got this, I know you guys are probably like, wait, 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 what is he saying? Just trust me, follow along. Notice this t is by itself, right? It's missing a, you see, this t is this t here. If I multiply by v cosine theta, I'll get x sub f here. You'll, you'll see what's going to happen. I'm going to take this equation number one. Just follow along. Try to understand what I'm doing here. I'm taking this t, it's this one. I'm just going to multiply it by v cosine theta, okay? So I'm taking this t, that's this one here, and I'm going to multiply it by v sub naught cosine theta. Well, what I do to one side, I do to the other, right? So I would multiply the right side by v cosine theta as well, right? So I'll end up with 2 v squared sub naught, or v sub naught quantity squared, cosine squared theta times, same thing, tangent theta plus tangent phi. And this would be all over G, right? So this essentially here is X sub F. Well, look at this. D cosine uh, phi is X sub F. So I could replace this X sub F here with this one. So that will end up with D cosine of phi is equal to this whole thing over here, right? Well, let me just rewrite it really quick here. I'll just speed this up. Okay, so now I can divide by cosine phi, right? So I could just move the cosine phi down here. And now I've got just D, right? And so I'll just, let me just clean this up a little bit here and just write this as D on the left. And this will be your new uh, solution for the D, right? So there you go. D is equal to that. Well, there, that takes care of that. So this would be equation number two, right? So now you've got the time and you've got the distance. So if you plug in the two angles and the velocity we're given, you'll get about 340.0107 meters, right? So 340 meters. That looks weird right there. That's, that's a three. There we go. Okay. So this would be the distance. So that takes care of this now. So now all that's left to do is find the final velocity. Uh, let me... Let me clear this stuff off the screen a little bit and kind of do what I did before. Okay, there we go. Uh, let me, now before we continue here, if you guys know what the uh, V sub X and V sub Y equations are, that's great. If you don't, you could just differentiate this right here and you can get, I guess I should do this in a different color. We'll use, now we'll use blue. So let's see, we'll have V sub X well, we're looking, actually, you know what, even before I do that, let me just, let me just tell you, 
what's going to end up happening. You see, this point P here, or the point of impact is, there is a velocity vector in the y direction and a velocity vector in the x direction. And what you're looking for is the magnitude of the velocity vector, the final velocity vector, right? And so the magnitude of V final essentially is going to be the square root of this is V sub Y. And then this would be, actually, these are little vector arrows. And this would be uh, V sub X. V sub X, here, just to clarify it, V sub X is this right here. This, this is V sub X right there, that particular vector, not the white. In fact, the white has nothing to do with this right now. But in fact, let me, uh, let me just get rid of that really quick. Clarify that right there. Okay, what we're going to do is take the, um, just like the Pythagorean theorem. We're, I mean, you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, and this would be, v sub x quantity squared plus v sub y quantity squared and this is all the square root of that right there and as you guessed you could just plug in the equations for v sub x and v sub y like i mentioned before if you don't know what they are you just differentiate this and so that'll give you so v sub x essentially is going to be with res your differential with respect to t, this will be v sub naught cosine of theta, and v sub y would be v sub naught sine of theta minus g t. There we go. And so essentially, you just plug these into there, right? You just plug this into here, plug this into there, and your final velocity, basically, your v final will be equal to, so the magnitude of this vector here, I'm just gonna call it V sub F, right? Just, that's my unknown right here, right? I just, I'm not gonna put the bars in here. You guys know where that's, where I'm going with that, right? So we're just gonna plug, we're gonna plug this into here and this into here. So that means my final answer is gonna look like this. Uh, v sub naught cosine theta quantity squared plus uh, v sub naught sine theta minus gt quantity squared and all this take the square root of it and again that sorry that is a square right there there we go all right and that would give you a final velocity if you work this problem out you plug in what you know so far so obviously you you have a time now and you just need one angle. So that would be 50 and this 10.4, about 10.4. If you plug that into here, you should get about 76.1884 meters per second. So that's pretty much it. I think everything was pretty straightforward. I guess the only thing that was kind of interesting, maybe, it was the fact that I created a ratio in the beginning. But other than that, everything else was just plug and play essentially uh, you just have to know what the this equation is right here you have to know what this is and what this is over here too so again like i've mentioned before this v sub x is the velocity in the x direction it's not the position okay so it's different than delta x this is different you see this right here looks like this but there's no t see this one here looks like this one but again there's only one t here right this t from here right but after you differentiate you get one right you get one t here and the t disappears over here it vanishes from here when you differentiate so these are the only two equations you'd have to know uh other than that the uh the solution actually is quite simple and now you have everything you need i guess we could just cross this off and then that completes it so if that's all you guys needed well in that case we're good so as always guys good luck with your homework and tests in the future and thank you for watching